Okay, today I'm going to be doing another acrylic pour. In fact, I'm doing three of them, and I'm going to be using a little bit different recipe than what I've done in the past. I have everything set up. I start by putting down a um, plastic cover for my table. Actually, I don't have a studio. I'm working in my kitchen, and this is a nice countertop, so I put down my plastic, and then I use these inexpensive metal trays, aluminum trays that I just get at the grocery store. And inside of that, I put a paper towel, and that's just so that you can see things better. Otherwise, you'd be getting the reflection from the aluminum tray. And then over that, I put down saran wrap, and that makes cleanup really easy. And then to hold my canvas up, I just have a couple of extra cups. In the past, I've used uh, pouring medium, and alcohol and silicone and all sorts of things. You can find that on some of my other videos. Um, today I've decided to use Floetrol paint and distilled water. And I'm using distilled water that was recommended to me because I live here in Phoenix where we have very hard water and hard water can do some strange things with paint since it has a lot of minerals in it itself. So recipe number one, which is going to be my first one here, on the far right will be two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and one part distilled water. I will not be using any silicone today. Um, I do like the effects of silicone. Silicone tends to rise to the surface though. It's oil and you're adding it to water-based paint. These are all acrylic paints. And um, the problem with that is when it rises to the surface, you end up with these little bubbles and things that um, contain the silicone. It makes nice cells, but then when it finishes and dries, you end up with a sort of a slick, oily surface, which is fine. You can clean that off. But I wanted to see about getting cells without having to use the silicone. If you'd like to see the, how the silicone works, and it does make beautiful effects, um, I recommend my other YouTube video. So for my second recipe, I'm going to use, that would be this, the center one here. I will use two parts Floetrol, one part paint. That's the same as the first recipe, but instead of distilled water, I'll use one part isopropyl alcohol, and I use 91%. I should mention for the Floetrol, I'm using the type that is latex-based. And step one is I will mix the Floetrol with the paint. And when I say parts, I don't go by weight. I know some people use weights. That's probably a bit more accurate, but I'm just going to go by measurements on my little cup here. And I buy these little cups and packs and they're not very expensive. If I'm using something that is two parts of one thing, one part of another, and one part of something else, then I need to divide it into fourths. And I can just, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So I'll add the Floetrol, then I'll add the paint, and then I'll use my stir stick to stir that well. And then after the paint has been added to the Floetrol, then the last part will be adding either the alcohol or the water. And I will do that with various colors. And this is not going to be a dirty pour, either of these. I'm going to pour it out and maybe manipulate it some myself and see what happens. I should note that um, each of these little cups is two ounces, so it's pretty easy to divide it into fourths. They're very well marked, half ounce, ounce, one and a half, and two. And I also should note for you that you need to really shake the Floetrol well. So I have four colors that I'm working with, so I have four small cups. Now I should also add that the whole point is to have a really good pouring consistency. When I'm using these Artist Loft paints, they already are fairly fluid. They're still a little bit thick for pouring, but the reason in my other video I used pouring medium is I used paints that were thicker, either like this or I used Basics or um, Grumbacher or something that came in a tube. Those need to be thinned more, and it's not good to add too much water the flow trawl is used like a pouring medium. Okay, now I'll add a bit of water, but I don't think I'll add as much. I'll add just a little bit, maybe half as much. 
that's a good consistency right there to keep that stirred. I haven't used Floetrol before, so this will be interesting. Okay, I'm not sure why this didn't tape while I was doing this part, but what I did is I poured down some streaks of blue, just diagonal streaks, and then I poured some diagonal streaks of purple, and at the very end I poured some, just a line of white going around. And then I tilted it a couple of different ways to get them interacting a bit. I used my dust off can to squirt it and then I used my popsicle sticks to manipulate it a little bit and make sure that it came down across the sides. And I'm sorry that didn't show, so I'm going to actually redo that one. Okay, now I'll do the same thing. I'll just run some blue around it like this. And then as you tilt it and the paints mix with one another, you start getting some effect. And you can use a hair dryer for this part or I just use my dust off here. But that mixes the paints as well. And it actually brings out a different effect. And it needs to go down over the sides. And you change the looks as you do this, so that's why I was saying. You, you want to make sure it's runny enough to begin with. I do like playing with it like this, and I know that I'm changing the looks of it, but if you really like what's happening there, you want it to be thin enough that it'll run off and you don't have to do a lot of this. But I have my own ideas of how I want things to look, and I don't mind going back and playing around with it a bit. And when this is all done, I could go back and add um, a layer of resin or something like that. That's creating a lot of pretty cells. And then you can come back with your finger and just sort of clean up edges. This one is my first one that where the paint was a bit thicker and I don't have quite as much going on there and also it's still a little bit thick so I'm going to go back and hit it with my just my dust off can. Gives a little different effect again. Since I have one that I really like already, I'm not real concerned about this. It's just a little too thick still. The paint, see how it kind of globs up on top. And this is an example of not being thin enough. So I'm going to try a little experiment here. Now this one, I'm just trying to save this one because it's 
I could take this out of the video, but I don't really want to. I want to show you what you can do. So that kind of all stands up on top of it. But it was all too thick. So I'm going to try to get some paint to run off of it here. It might just be making a mess. I don't know. It's probably what I'm doing. Now, if you end up with something like this, though, see, I, I don't have GAC 800 in this either. So there's nothing to keep it from crazing on top. But I could always still scan this. If the, if the surface of it was not really nice, I could put a layer of um, resin over it and that would fill in any unevenness. Or I could use it for scanning purposes and create beautiful prints. So I'm not always super worried about surface being perfect because I certainly can use it for other things such as prints. You know, I would never use this then as a painting that I would sell to somebody because pouring water over the top isn't real good for a surface unless I were to add a resin coat to it. Um, that's not really appropriate surface, but it does make for a beautiful surface as far as the image that I have. That's really nice. It's quite pretty. So this is the one that I had to add the water over the top to to get it to flow a bit more. So I have to get over my fear of paint being too thin. I'm used to doing paintings rather than pours. And this is the one where I got the paint the right consistency to begin with, and it's really quite pretty. So this recipe was just two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and one part distilled water. And I'm really happy with how this looks. I think when I get these scanned, I can scan them at a very high resolution, and then I can have them printed as all sorts of things. I can print to fabric, or I can upload it to various places that can print mugs and prints and things like that. Now another thing that I can do is I can use my um, flame here, and that can bring out some activity as well. not seeing a lot of change from using the flame. Sometimes more little cells and things will pop out. It's, it's more important when you have bubbles and you want the bubbles to pop, such as when you're using silicone, it helps things rise to the surface and pop. And then you can kind of fill it in and not have little divots and dents and things on the surface. But um, not really noticing a lot of change with it on this one. So we'll see what happens with that as it dries. And I'm going to move on now and do the same recipe, but with alcohol. Okay, so this time I am using two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and stirring those. I have new popsicle sticks, so I'm not mixing up anything. Um, all it would be is a little distilled water. That's the only difference. And I'm using blue, gold, and white. And then I'm going to add, instead of distilled water, I will add one part alcohol. So now I have about three quarters of this cup filled. So I've just added the alcohol to the white. I'll stir that really well. You could even try some paint where you do some alcohol and some distilled water. And I will be doing that. My final painting will be a dirty pour with everything that I've made up today. Okay, so now I have my Floetrol was to half mark, coming up to the three quarters I put in the paint, and then the alcohol sits up on top. It's the last thing I added after stirring the Floetrol with the paint really well. And you can see along the sides here where the alcohol kind of wants to make the paint separate a bit, so you really don't want too much alcohol. And now I'll just start to pour this out. And that's a good consistency, I think. Keep these over this way. I'll stir again. A 
You can see how that reacts there. And the gold will react. Now the, the white is a heavier paint and it will tend to run down inside. And the gold is quite heavy. I think it'll run down even more than the others. I think that will be quite pretty. Putting on my gloves because I know this will be messy. So now I can start pouring. It's almost kind of like a look of marble. I really like this. So you can see you don't have to use silicone to get some nice effects. Oh, that's pretty. Gosh, I don't think I want to do anything with that one. I think that's absolutely beautiful. So I believe that out of all of my poor recipes and tries that I've done so far, I would say this is my favorite. That is really pretty. I think that is my all-time favorite. Okay, this is my final painting. And you've seen the pour with the two parts flow troll, one part paint, and one part distilled water. And then you've seen the one with the same recipe, but using alcohol instead of distilled water. So what I'm going to do right now is I have these cups and I'm going to do what's called a dirty pour. And for that, I'm taking my leftover paints, which is, might even have to fill two cups, and that's fine too. I have white. So I have white with the Floetrol, and I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my white. I'm sorry, put in the white with the alcohol and the white with the distilled water. Mix that. Put that in first so that it dumps out last. And then I'm putting in some blue. And my purple. So this will be kind of interesting. My gold, and I'm not stirring them, I'm just dumping them in. A little bit, is there a little more white in here? There's just a few drops of white. And my blue, again, the rest of my blue. I'm going to create a fairly clean environment here. And this is my ultimate experiment for you because not only do I have all my different paints mixed up in here, I'm going to use a hairdryer. So to do the dirty pour, we go like this. Put the canvas that way, you flip it over, and then you let go of it and you just let it do what it's going to do which is usually really interesting. And the purple kind of disappeared in there. And now I have my hair dryer all ready to go. For the remainder of it, I can pour a little bit, although I don't want to do too much now because I really like that. Some areas here are a little bit thick. That kind of did some interesting stuff. I like getting effects that are kind of marbly, kind of look a little more like nature, something almost that you'd see. Of course, marble wouldn't be this color but 
it's really pretty. I need to make sure that all my edges are covered nicely. Although again, I may use this more for prints because these are just small sample pieces. Oh, this is really pretty. The gold almost disappeared, but there's just enough in it that it's really pretty. I think that's really nice. So the only thing that I did not do is I did not add GAC 800, which I have done in the past to keep it from crazing, but I, I don't think I get as much of that if I don't use the silicone. I would recommend that if you use silicone, you should probably use the GAC 800, but that's just a personal preference type thing. Now I might have, I don't know, I, I, I think that I really like the alcohol, but I can see that you can add some paints with just the water, some with just the alcohol. And it's very, very pretty. So I'll give you one last look at these, and then I'll, I'll scan these and show the final images. So this is the last one that I just did. The hair dryer made some interesting effects, the way that it blew around the paint. I think that's really, really pretty. I think I should add a coat of resin to all of these. And I really like that effect. So I think I'll do some more paintings where some paints are mixed with distilled water and others are mixed with isopropyl alcohol. This is the one that had the two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and one part isopropyl alcohol. It also is beautiful. And this was the one that was two parts Floetrol, one part paint, one part distilled water. And that was the right mix. The first one I had cut back a bit on the water, that's why it was too thick. This one was just right and I really like that. As this dried, some areas showed up um, around this area right in here with some very large blue circles. Now, I personally don't really care for that look. I prefer to have it look more like natural stone or marble or something. And this type of thing happens because the white paint sinks because it's heavier. And it just happens to be the way that the cells formed. But like I said, it's a little bit too much of a circle -y look for me. So what I do is I just take a little bit of paint on my um, popsicle stick and I come back in and just sort of play around, jump it right up on top. And that breaks up that look. I don't want the eye, when the fit, painting is finished, I don't want the eye to go to just one spot. Um, I want the overall composition to be nice. So don't be afraid to play around with things as they dry. I could even bring back my hair dryer and, and blow it some more and things like that, but I don't want to do that. I'm actually very happy with the overall look of the painting. But um, I watch for things like that. In any place where I see large circles that don't really belong or that make your eye go just to that one spot and it looks a little out of place, just use a toothpick. Um, I fix those areas. That's just me. I don't just pour and then walk away and leave it and come back the next day to see what it looks like dry. A lot of people do that, but I end up enjoying seeing how it changes, but I also enjoy doing little changes myself here and there. These are the finished scans of my four paintings. And they have dried overnight, and I'm really, really happy with all of them. The surfaces are all beautiful. There isn't any strange crazing or cracking or bubbles or lumps or anything like that. They all have a nice, smooth surface. So I think I have discovered probably my favorite recipe that works for me. And I do like using the hair dryer. And um, the uh, dust off works well, too. You can also even just use a straw and blow through the straw and the popsicle sticks worked well so 
experiment yourself and try many different ways of maneuvering the paint around and uh, try different recipes and mixes to find your favorite. Thank you for watching and please remember to subscribe.